Welcome traders to another Tignell Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 11th of October with me, Patrick Munley. In the US, the focus is going to be solely on Wednesday's CPI release, with economists revising up near-term inflation projections to reflect higher energy prices, with most raising core estimates a little as well, reflecting ongoing supply-demand imbalances. That said, most market watchers continue to expect significant slowing in 2022 as fiscal policy turns contradictory, demand moderates and supply and demand relationships start to normalise. The consensus is for a 5.3% print versus the previous 5.3%. Also on Wednesday we receive the FOMC minutes. Operating assumption there is that a monthly reduction of the US dollar 15 billion QE number to dollar figure more like 10 billion in treasuries and uh, 5 billion mortgages is the easy answer for the committee and it would confirm with the 2022 stop date guidance. It's cognizant of the value of flexibility from the Fed's perspective and therefore it will be notable if the minutes include any details surrounding the discussion of how the committee plans to execute the reduction of bond buying. Will it be an ongoing evaluation of the appropriateness or further cuts? Or is it erring on the side of autopilot seen as a more prudent approach? Uh, lastly, in the US next week, Friday sees retail sales uh, likely dragged lower by the plunge in vehicle sales. This is more a function of a lack of supply than a drop off in demand given the dearth of inventory to sell. The ongoing production bottlenecks and the fast second hand car prices are up 45% this year. Outside of autos, the figures should remain positive with rising incomes and surging household wealth providing strong underpinnings. From a technical perspective, the dollar index continues its bullish consolidation just below the 94.50 handle. Uh, look for any pullbacks into the pivot and support zone here at 93.50. Bullish reversal patterns there to re-engage on the long side, looking for a test of the 95 handle. Uh, from there, we'll have to reassess and see uh, if they step back in and we see a more meaningful correction. But for now, the short-term focus is really any pullbacks into the support zone at 93.50 for long positions. In the Eurozone, uh, Tuesday's German October ZEW investor confidence is going to be closely watched. Expect moderation in sentiment both for current conditions and the expectations components. The current sentiment is weighed down by persistent supply shortages, limiting production as well as some upside inflation surprises, while expectations are clouded with uncertainty over the winter. However, both components should remain at elevated levels overall as the recovery continues. Consensus is for the economic sentiment at 24 versus previous 26.5 and current conditions 29 versus previous 31.9. From a technical perspective, the euro dollar is attempting to put in a short term base here. I'm watching for three wave corrective moves back in to test this 117 handle as resistance. From there, I look for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions, ultimately looking for a move down to test the 114.39 area. At this stage, it will take a close outside of the projected descending pitchfork resistance to uh, re-engage bullish sentiment. And so we'll be looking for a close back over 118. But for now, focus on the downside. In terms of uh, Japan, second tier data out next week, really Monday and Wednesday, manufacturing related indicators, industrial production, uh, machine tools, and core industrial production all expected to come in on the weak side. From a technical perspective, the dollar yen popped higher on Friday and now looking for any pullbacks into the 111.72, 111.60 area to find support, which are bullish reversal patterns and long positions, ultimately looking for a test of the long awaited 113.07, and that will be a key decision point for the market. At this stage, it would take a loss of the pivot at 110.79 uh, to suggest further weakness back down into the support zone at 109.50. In the UK, uh, UK jobs data is going to be in focus early on Monday morning. On the employment rate front, markets expecting the official jobless rate to slip to 4.4% on the back of strong jobs demand. 
also noteworthy that we get a sense of September employment with the HMRC releasing its latest payroll data. This could give some clues as to how the end of the furlough scheme could unfold. Consensus is for the jobless rate to come in at 4.4% versus a previous 4.6%. Also on Wednesday in the UK, we received GDP and manufacturing output data. Uh, while the figures for August came before the large rises in energy prices seen over the last month, um, we were talking about a slowing in growth even before the energy crisis hit. It's also noteworthy that the forecast of 0.4% month-over-month rise in output in August, implying an annual rate of 6.4% and a quarterly rate of 2.6%. Now, this is a rise in manufacturing output during the month, with both the PMI and CBI surveys pointing to growth. Though this can be a volatile series prone of late to supply chain disruptions. The consensus is for GDP to come in year-over-year, 6.7% versus a previous 7.5%. From a technical perspective, Sterling continues to struggle just above this one, uh, sorry, 136.40, 136.50 level. As that area continues to contain the upside for now, watch for pullbacks into the uh, 135 handle to find uh, fresh demand, looking for a three-way corrective move up to test the descending trendline resistance coming in at 135.70 to 135.80. From there, we look for another negative downside to ultimately challenge the 133.30 before we see a more meaningful attempt to the upside. Lastly, down under in Australia, focus on Thursday's jobless data. As uh, in July, August surprised with a fall in unemployment, even though there was significant outsized fall in employment. Uh, as we saw through 2020, the labour market can be very responsive to lockdowns, with many deciding not to look for work given the lack of demand, inability to leave the house and or increased childcare demands. Uh, markets looking for a further 0.9 percentage point fall in participation to 64.2%. This will see a 190k fall in the labour force mostly offsetting the 200k loss in employment, limiting the rise in unemployment to 4.7%. From a technical perspective, the Australian dollar is testing the resistance zone 73.60 to 73.70. As bearish reversal patterns develop here, look for another leg of downside to ultimately get a test of the yearly pivot just below the 70 cents level before we can mount the potential for a more meaningful corrective phase. At this stage, it would take a close back through 73.85 to suggest that we have further upside and we'd be looking then for a equality objective to develop versus this swing structure here, which would probably take us up into the monthly range resistance at the 75 handle. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.